Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay. So last time uh, we were talking about uh, interest. So uh, specifically, today's the, today's the what? 16? 15? So last time, last time we, we discussed two interest models. One of them is simple interest. The simp simple interest model formula is I is equal to P R T. And then conceptually what it is is that you take a deposit P, you put it into an account, and the account balance is P for all time. And what happens is that every time uh, an interest payment is, a, is, is assessed, then it is like you get a payment of I in the mail, uh, like, like, like in a check. But this is not the way it happens in, in real life. Uh, what, what, is, what is the real life situation usually? It's compounded, right? So instead of, instead of this payment sort of li leaving and never coming back, what happens? Yeah, it gets put back in into the account. Okay, so that, that, uh, that situation is called compound interest. Compound interest. Its model is A is P multiplied by 1 plus R over N to exponent NT. Uh, in this case, in this case, what happens is, uh, sort of conceptually, is that at the initial time you put in a deposit of P, and the amount that is actually in the account is changing because every time interest is assessed from on, on the account, uh, you can think of it like the money, the the interest payment briefly goes out. Uh, and, and, and comes back and is deposited in. So this, uh, uh, a simple interest account, the, the account balance is constant for all time, and then for a compound interest account, uh, it's, it's changing in time. So let's see why, uh, why this should be the, the formula. So specifically, let's consider uh, an example. It says, okay, suppose that we uh, put, say, $1,000 into an account. And, uh, <clears throat> and what happens is, is that after, let, let's say, uh, at the end of every month, a 2% interest is assessed. So specifically, that means that at zero months, that is to say when, when, you, when you first um, deposit, the account balance will be 1,000. Okay. Then, at, at one month when the first interest payment is assessed, what will the new account balance be? Not 1,200. Nearly, but you're off by a decimal place. 1,020, right? Because the new account balance is going to be the previous account balance plus 2% of the previous account balance which is to say 1,000 multiplied by, uh, well, if we want to represent 2% as a decimal, what do we have to write? 0 0.02. Now, what I want you to see about this is that considering this, uh, considering this sum, uh, do you observe that there's a common factor of 1,000? 
so that we could factor 1,000 out. And if we were to do that, it would be 1,000 multiplied by, well, if you factor 1,000 out of that, that's a 1, and then plus 0 0.02. So what I want you to uh, observe is that this would be uh, 1,000 multiplied by 1.02. So, that means that at the end of one month, you have 102% of what you previously had. 100 because you didn't lose anything, and 2% more, well, because that was the interest. And then if you multiply this out, that's, um, uh, that's 1,020. So at the end of the second month, so now interest will be assessed again, but now what, what's going to happen is that interest is going to be assessed on, on uh, the 1,020. So you could think of it like, well, as a, result, as a result of the interest in the first month, we got a $20 payment. Now is the, is the next interest payment going to be $20? Why not? Right, because now it's going to, instead of being 2% of 1,000, it's going to be 2% of 1,020. So the interest payment is going to be a little more. Okay. Well, in particular, I'm going to write it like this. Uh, instead of, it, the, the, the value is this, but I'm writing it like this. On, I'm going to write it in this way on purpose. So what we'll have is we'll have this same amount and then we'll have that same amount again uh, and 2% of it. So the reason why is because this, this, was, the, this was the balance, so we're still going to have that and then plus 2% of that balance. So now what I want you to observe from here is, is in this expression, do you see that something is common? So in the first place, we could factor out 1,000, right? But what else could we also factor out? The 1.02. And if we were to do that, it'd be 1,000 multiplied by 1.02. And then uh, if you factor that out of this first term, that'd be a 1. And then plus what? If we factor it out of this term. 0.02. So, so this would be 1,000 multiplied by 1.02 multiplied by 1.02, which of course you could write as 1,000 multiplied by 1.02 squared. That would be uh, and if you were if you were to get out your calculator and do this, this would be one zero four zero point four zero. Okay, so then the new interest payment, the 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 the, the second interest payment, uh, would have been twenty dollars and forty cents. Let, let let me make sure that I did that right. I'm not sure that second four is in the right place. My brain is kind of off. Yeah, okay, that's right. So what would, so what I want you to see, what I hope you'll start to see is that there's a pattern emerging. A pattern is emerging. What would be, what would the, be the balance at the, at the third month? Well, not, not this. What I want you to see is, is a pattern, uh, is a pattern here. So. This was the amount, and then this was the amount. Exactly. So for this one, it's going to be 1,000 and then 1.02 cubed, whatever that, whatever that turns out to be. So in fact, uh, I could ask, you know, what, well, what is it at 60 months? 
Well, it would be it would be this uh, thousand times 1.02 to exponent 60. You just type it into your calculator. So that being the case, <clears throat> if we give names to all these values, if we say that p is the principal, uh, principal. that R is the uh, interest rate. That N is the number of compoundings per period. Uh, and that T is the number of periods. Okay, and to, and to be clear, what this is saying, this can be made clear with an example. Uh, if the annual interest rate, so this is a this is by way of example. If the annual interest rate is 24%, so by the way, if you can find an annual interest rate of 24%, you should just sell all of your things <laughs> and put it in in this account. Uh, fine. If the annual interest rate is 24% uh, and it is compounded monthly, what does that mean? That would mean R is what? What's the 0 0.24? And what is N? So the fact that it says annual interest rate means that the period is one year. Period is one year. So if the compounding is monthly, then what's N? 12. Because how many months are there in a year? There's 12 of them. Okay, so un understand what, <clears throat> what this means. If you have a 24% annual interest rate and it's compounded monthly, then the effective monthly interest rate is 24% divided by 12. Okay, because you take, the, you take the, the, the periodic rate, which is 24, and then you divide by 12. Okay, <clears throat> so then making a table, at month zero, the initial deposit is P. The initial deposit is P. <clears throat> At month one, we'll have interest assessed so that the new balance will be P plus P multiplied by the, the correct interest rate. Well, what's the correct interest rate? So, in, in terms of these numbers, uh, would it be, am I supposed to put an R here? So, so there is something with R here, but it's not quite R. <clears throat> so, so remember, this is, this is, um, this is like, you could say, if we have a 24% annual interest rate, but it's being compounded monthly. My question is, is what is the effective monthly interest rate then? It's not 24%. You won't get 24% every month. You'll get 2% every month because it's 24 over 12. Okay, suppose that you had a 48% annual interest rate. <laughs> Go, go put all of your money in there and <laughs> go do that, uh, just for sake of argument. Suppose we have a 48% annual interest rate compounded monthly. Then what's the effective monthly interest rate? 4%, because it'd be 48 over 12, which is 4. Okay, and if you had a 36% divided by 12, the effective rate would be 3, etc. So what goes right here? It would be the annual interest rate divided by n. So that's just like 
That's just like 24 over 12. But do you observe that there's a common factor here? Something could be factored out, right? What could be factored out? A P. So if we did factor out a P, what goes in here? <clears throat> yeah, 1 plus R over N. Okay, so then this would be the new balance. So this is like on the previous page where we said 1.02, 102%, like on the previous page. Then at the end of the second month, uh, we would again have that much, P multiplied by 1 plus R over N, and then we, we, we would take that much again and multiply it by the effective interest rate, which is R over N. And do you observe that in this expression, we can factor out things? So what can be factored out for this one? Well, a P can be factored out. What else can be factored out? this thing in parentheses, right? So we could factor out a P and a 1 plus R over N. And if we were to do that, what do I need to write inside of these square parentheses? We'll, so for, this, for the second term, we'll need R over N. And then 1 for the first one. Ah, so can you see? Ah, it's 1 plus r over n again. So, so this would be p multiplied by 1 plus r over n, and I could just write squared. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if, if we come down to, uh, say, uh, like eight, what 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 will be the the answer? Very good. Exponent eight. And if we go with the with the specific case, if we go with the specific case uh, that that this is uh, that R is an annual interest rate and this is a number of months. So if I, if this so if I say that this is month. Zero month, uh, one month, two month, eight. If I come down to here and I say, well, what about, what about at say year uh, three? Well, right. So then. So the, 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 the correct answer, exponent should be 36 because after all there's uh, 36 months in three years. So this would be P 1 plus R over N uh, and then the exponent should be, will, will be 36. But what I want you to see is that this would be, uh, would be N multiplied by 3 because N is 12, right? So if I take this just a little bit further and say, well, what if we get to year t, then what's the answer? And t. And t because just like, just like when I asked how uh, what would be the exponent if it was three years? Well, it would be 36 because there's 12 months in a year. If it was two years, well, it would be NT. Good. So let's, uh, let's do an example one of these. <clears throat> so for example, find the account balance. After five years, uh, 
uh, if the initial deposit is one three one four dollars uh, the annual interest rate is uh, how about um, four point eight percent and it is compounded monthly okay So we are um, we're doing an interest problem, evidently, uh, but we have two different interest models. We've got the sim simple interest model and the compound interest model. Which one uh, is going to be used in this exercise? The compound interest model. What is your clue? <laughs> well, the fact that it says compounded monthly, right? Good. So there's going to be one more interest model that we talk about today, so you're going to have to be able to read the code word, right? So the fact that this says compounded monthly in indicates that we're going to be using the compound interest formula. So in particular, uh, that formula is A is 1 plus R over N to NT. Now, how many parameters are in that model? Letters. <laughs> Not th things that are varying. There's five of them, right? So what I want you to, uh, to, to remember is that when you're given a model and a question about it, the only way that the question can really make sense uh, is if I give you all but one of them, all but one of the parameters. So I must have given you four things, uh, and, and, and I, I must be asking you for the, for the last one. Right. So then let's write them all down and, and see what, what, what we have. So uh, P, is this, was this given or, or is this what we are to find? It's given, okay. W where is it given? Okay, its value is 1314 uh, because... Uh, well, it says the initial deposit. That's what the principle is. Okay, how about uh, R? Was this given or is this what we were to find? It's given. Okay, what's its value? Not 0.48. Almost. 0.048. Right, 0. Point, uh, sorry, uh, 0. 0.48 would be 48%. Right? <laughs> That'd be a lot. That'd be terrific. Uh, okay. Uh, N, is this, uh, is this given or is this what we're, we are to find? It's given. What is its value? So N is the number of compoundings per period. So it's 12. 12, right? So then, so then if it said compounded weekly, then what would N be? 52. And if it said compounded daily, then N would be 365, it, unless it's a leap year. Uh, if it said fortnightly, it, it, that a fortnight is two weeks, but then what would N be? 26, right? <laughs> okay, so you gotta, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try not to be exotic with the, with the adjectives, okay? But you've gotta be able to pick, pick it up. Like if I say quarterly, what does that mean? N is four, okay? And, and I'll never say, I'll never say uh, uh, biannually or semi-annually. And the reason is because uh, if, do understand that those are ambiguous terms. So if you ever go to a bank or enter into a contract and part of the contract, or, or, or just otherwise in, in, enter into a contract, if they say biannually, you, you need to tell them right there, I need you to write the number of months that you mean. Because, because if, it, if it's in 
because you can interpret it either way that's in your interest. You can say biannually means twice a year or every two years. Okay, so pay close attention to that. A little contract advice. Uh, T, is this given or is this what we are supposed to find? Given, what's its value? Five. And then A, is this given or is this what we're supposed to find? Okay, how can, what part of the story is saying that that's, that's what we're supposed to find? Well, I, I like that process of elimination thought, but specifically, what, what is, what is in, the, in, the, in the statement is telling you that A is what you want to find? The account balance. Okay, now for those of you taking business or uh, accounting or anyth anything like that, uh, uh, a, a common name for A is the future value. So this kind of problem is asking, what's the, what is the future value of $1,314 assuming these conditions? Okay, now, just as a brief check of your idea, uh, uh, of, your, of, your, of your concept of this, are we expecting uh, A to be more or less or the same as 1314 More. Why are we expecting it to be more? How could it be less? <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, you know, you, you could say, for example, buy buy a five thousand dollar car today, and then in 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 six years, it's going to be worth less. Okay, and what I'm asking is why, why should it be that we're going to get more? Right, c c well, because the interest rate is positive, so it's, so it's accumulating. Okay, so uh, in, in this exercise, do you observe that, that, that we have all but one and we are to find that last one? Okay, <clears throat> so, so doing that, we have A is 1, 3, 1, 4, multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.048 divide by 12 raised to exponent 12 times 5. Okay, so then I recommend if you have a calculator, see if you can get your calculator to do this right now. Okay, so did anybody do it? <laughs> no one? I'll give you all a second. So, uh, while, while you're doing that, I'll show you the sequence of keystrokes I had to do to, to do it. So, in, in, in my particular calculator, I typed 1314, then multiply parentheses 1 plus 0 0.048 divide 12, close parentheses, caret, open parentheses, 12 times 5. So that's what I had to type into, into this kind of calculator. <clears throat> so at any rate, uh, this kind of exercise is going to be on a quiz and, and the final exam. So uh, it is, it, it, it would be very unwise <laughs> for the quiz or the, or, or the exam to be the first time you attempt to get your calculator to play this game. Okay, so then <clears throat> for those of you that did it, uh, what'd you get? 1669. Very good, 1669, that's the dollars and then rounded to the nearest cent. That's to the nearest dime. 0.6. To the nearest cent, <clears throat> right? Because these are dollars and cents. Uh, good. So, any question about this? Uh, separate question. How about uh, how about 
Mm, let's let's go through the following thought experiment. Suppose suppose that you have a an older sibling, uh, and that just today they uh, they they had their first child. I suppose, and you think, ah, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a deposit today into an interest-bearing account, and I want it to be such that on the 18th birthday of my new nephew or niece, uh, they have enough money to go to UTD. <laughs> okay, or whatever, whatever thing you like. Okay, so then, uh, in, in, in your mind. So how much money do we want to have 18 years from now? 100,000. So suppose that we want $100,000 uh, 18 years from now. Uh, uh, and suppose furthermore that we have, uh, uh, um, what am I trying to say? An annual interest rate Of okay, what? Three percent. I'm just going with, with the, <laughs> with the crowd here. Annual interest rate of of three percent, and just to be different than the previous exercise, I'll say that this is compounded, quarterly. Just to, be be difficult. <laughs> Compounded quarterly. Uh, what deposit must we must we make today? So now, uh, again, for those of you who are taking uh, business or 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 that kind of class, uh, the name. The, the name for uh, $100,000 is, uh, is, is a future value, but you want to know, but the thing is is that this $100,000 is located 18 years from now. Okay, that, that's where it's located. What we want to know is how much is it right now. So, uh, so that, the, the, the name for that in the, in the business sense is called, uh, please calculate the present value of $100,000, assuming these conditions. So this one was uh, future, future value, this one is, is present value. So specifically, let's go through it. Okay, so P, are we given this or is this what we are to find? This is what we are to find. This is what we must find. Uh, R, what's that? Yes. N, four, why four? because it says quarterly, uh, T, S, and A, 100,000. Okay, so do you observe that this is a five parameter model and I gave you all but one and you are supposed to find the last one? Okay. As a result, uh, we have the following. 100,000 is P multiplied by one plus 0 0.03 over 4 raised to exponent 4 times 18. Okay. So 100,000 is P, and I'll do that bit in my calculator. By the way, three percent is not a very good rate. <laughs> if you're going to allow, if you're going to allow someone to hold on to your money for that long, for 18 years, that's not good. Uh, for 18 years today, it'd probably be on the order of like 6.1 mm, percent or something like that. 
that's not that's not really that great though because I only say that because that's just a couple points above inflation. <laughs> Three percent is below inflation. <laughs> so so in fact, if you were to enter into this agreement, you'd actually lose money. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, yeah, we're assuming we're assuming that that inflation is not a thing, I guess, right now. So 1.712552707. Okay. So did I do that right? 4 times 18. Yeah. It's just three percent. It's just not a lot. Okay. So then to to uh, to get p, we need to divide by that number. Divide 100,000 by that number. Okay, so then according to my calculator, that's 58,392 rounded to the nearest cent is 36, is P. Okay. Well, what that's saying is that uh, essentially you can think of it like saying that um, $58,000 now, pre uh, presently, is worth $100,000 uh, $100, 18 years from now. Uh, well, yeah, we're ignoring inflation, all the, all the effects of inflation. And if we were, if, if we were to, really quick, just as a matter of let, let, let's figure it out, so this is an aside, Let's look and see what if what if it what if the interest rate were six percent? Okay, so then what if six percent? So I can answer this quickly because I can just change one little thing in my calculator. What if it was six percent? So uh, if the rate were six percent, would you expect that P should be more or less than this value? Less than. Should be less than, which is to say that it should take less money to, for it to become $100,000 because we've got a better rate. Okay. If I quickly edit my calculator to where it's doing uh, that, <coughs> then 6%, uh, then the same calculation gives 34232. Uh, well, a bunch of nines actually. So that would be two, three, three, and then zero, zero. So look at that. That's just a coincidence that doubling the rate caused this number to. Well, that's actually not half. So we doubled the rate, and then and then significantly less money, right? Good. Interesting. Any question about this kind of idea? Okay. So. Um, Let's, let's go through a thought experiment. What I want you to imagine is that uh, I'm a bank and that, you're go that, that I'll, I'll enter to, into an agreement for you to, to put $1 on deposit with me and I'll give you a 100% interest rate, uh, but this, um, this, this bank account must close at, at one year. Okay? So, if, so what I'm saying uh, if you're going to deposit one dollar with a hundred percent annual interest rate, and you're gonna you're gonna we're gonna close it after one year, then what what this says in the story is that what's the what is the p? P is One. <laughs> What's R? So what's the what's the value of R? One. One. And what's T? Uh, One. <laughs> so I'm saying I want you to consider the specific case when P, R, and T are one. And that, that is saying you're going you're gonna to deposit a dollar into the, into the college algebra bank or whatever, bank of college algebra, and 
that you're going to have it open for one year, and it's going to be a 100% interest rate. So, so, so com suppose for a moment that we just do this one compounding. I hold your dollar, then at the end of the year when we close out the account, what do I return to you? Two dollars, right? Because I return to you your dollar and also 100% interest, so that's another dollar. So if we compound it just once, then you get two dollars. Suppose we compound it twice, which is to say, I hold your dollar for six months, and then at the end of six months, how much interest is assessed? Not 100%, but how much? What do you think? 50, right? 50. So I've held your dollar for six months. We assess 50% interest, but it's being compounded so, so that 50 cents gets put into your account. So now your account reads $1.50, and then I hold that for a further six months, and then I assess the last 50% of interest. But what's 50% of $1.50? Seventy-five, mm -hmm. right? And then I add that into the account, and then we close it out. So then, how much do you get back in that case? <laughs> We're having arithmetic uh, bad day, huh? We need some. We all need coffee. So, so, I hold your dollar for six months. Then I assess 50% interest, I add 50 cents. Then you have $1.50 for six months, I assess 50% interest, that's 75 cents. I put that in your account, close it out, give it back to you. How much is that? 225. $2 Do you notice that that's more than $2? Yes. yes. So specifically, uh, I'm saying let's take this model, A is P multiplied by 1 plus R over N to NT. And I want to replace P, R, and T with 1. So this, after doing that, it would be like 1 plus 1 over N to N. Because all those other things became 1. And what I'm saying is that we just out loud checked uh, the case w uh, when N is 1. So let's plug N is 1 into this and make sure that we really get 2 to make sure we haven't made some kind of serious error. So 1 plus 1 over 1 raised to exponent 1. So I type that into the calculator there. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. So I'm plugging in n is 1, and I get 2. In incredible. <laughs> so uh, when I plug in 2, what, what should we get for this? Uh, whoops. 2.25. Is it going to work? Incredible. So then that's 2.00. This one is 2.25. Uh, let's skip a little bit down to say, what if we do this sort of regularly, like in business, and we do it every month? Then n would be 12. So let's type that in. So that'd be 1 plus 1 over 12 to exponent 12. And we get, ah, oh, wow, 2.61. So here's the question we need to think about. So do you observe that it's going up? Now here's the thing, the further thing about the bank of college algebra is that uh, I, I require that, that the principal is 1, the interest rate is 100%, uh, and the time of the account is, is 1 year. But you can choose the, the number of compoundings, right? This would be every month. So but between, say, every six months and every month, which one do you prefer? Every month. every month. Every month. Well, what will be better than every month? Every day. Every day, right? Twice a day. Twice a day. That, that'd be terrific. A hundred, a hundred times a second. Okay, so let's, let's come up with a, so now, now we need to make a prediction. So we got it up to 261. Uh, are we going to be able to get it up to five dollars? No. No? Won't get up to five dollars? More? Like 500? The other way? The other way? Yeah, no, it's going to be like three or something. Okay. Let's check. 
So how about I'll do a one with nine zeros. Uh, just as a quick check so we can see how big that is, 365 days in a year, 24 hours in a day, uh, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds uh, in a minute. So, so that is the number of seconds in a year. So that's on the order of, uh, what, 31 million? So this is a billion. Okay, so this is, this is many, many times a second. Okay. One, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros raised to exponent one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. Okay, so I typed it in carefully, and we get. <laughs> we get. 2.718281828459045, and that's all the ones that I've memorized. And I've memorized these numbers because, yes? Oh, I just want to say that if you do it over 365, it's only 2.714. All right. So, so, so going from, from 365 to a billion, we managed to take this fraction of a penny. Just a little bit up. So I have, I have these digits memorized. Why do I have these digits memorized? This is the natural number. So this is one of the fundamental constants of nature. This, is, uh, this value is E, and it is referred to as the natural number. So to, to put that into context, to put that into context, if uh, if we plot some exponential functions, uh, then every exponential function will go through the point zero one. So if if, if this is 2 to x, so if that's 2 to x, then uh, if, I, if I start drawing 3 to x, 3 to x will also leave this point, and where will it be? Will it be over or under this one? It'll be over. It'll be going up quite a bit faster, actually. So this is 3 to x. And then if I draw 2 to x to the negative part, then it will look like this. And so where will blue be with respect to red on the left side? It'll be under. So now, there's a, there's a thing about uh, natural processes that, ha that, that are in any way related to uh, exponential like radioactive decay and bacterial growth and things like this. Uh, for various physical reasons, uh, nature prefers uh, a particular base, right? Kind of like uh, the, the, the Goldilocks zone. Nature, you know, nat nature hates it when you anthropomorphize it, but... Uh, Ah, oh, that's a joke. Um, <clears throat> 2 to x is not quite fast enough. Right, this porridge is too cold. 3 to x, oh, this is too fast. This porridge is too hot. What is, what is nature's preference? The exponential of x. E, yeah, e to x. So this exponential, for various physical reasons, is referred to as the natural exponential. And it shows up all over science for those reasons. It, it's well, there's there is a constant that's that's related to Fibonacci, but that's a different number called the golden ratio. Okay, so have a nice Wednesday.